Hello YouTube, KG7 Echo Echo Delta here. Thought I'd just give you a little information on my Baofeng UV5R Plus. I just got this in the mail yesterday. Seems like it's a really good radio. Uh, I was a little reluctant to buy it just because of the price. Uh, I'm one of those kind of guys that thinks he has to buy the best of everything and I'm a new ham, so I started off with my 2 meter mobile rig. It's a Yesu uh, FT2900R. Uh, I have that hooked up as a base radio here, and it does great with the local repeaters. Um, I have a 5 8 wave stacked uh, diamond vertical antenna up on the roof. Uh, it's a diamond CP22E. Real nice antenna, real good price. Um, I'm getting really good signal reports with that. I also ran uh, some really good coaxial. It's Times Microwave LMR 400. Uh, so, like everyone says, it's not the radio, it's the antenna. And uh, even though I'm a new ham, I tend to agree with people on that. But anyways, uh, this is my little HT. Uh, I've used it a little bit just last night. I got this, I believe it was $49.95 on Amazon, and that was shipped. Um, I got it from a company called Sane Sonic. I don't know if you can read that little uh, name emblem on the bottom of the case there, but uh, they're the ones who sold it. It was fulfilled through Amazon. Um, now, unexpectedly, I got these two little silicone cases. I wasn't expecting them and uh, they're really nice. I don't know how they ended up putting two in there, but I'm not complaining. Uh, the only modification I had to do was to take a real nice sharp X-Acto knife and uh, I cut a little hole right where the LED is there, the status LED, not the flashlight LED. You can see on, on this one here that it doesn't have that uh, little hole there. So real, real easy to do that. Um, but the main reason I'm making this video is to show you how to modify a diamond SRH77CA. This is an antenna that I had already. Uh, I used it on my Uniden BCD396XT digital scanner. Uh, great little antenna. I've had it for years. It's held up to a lot of abuse. Um, but the problem, the Baofeng comes with a female SMA. This is a male SMA. Uh, so th this, this is a little strange. It's actually a reverse female is what I believe it's called uh, in technical jargon. So obviously this antenna is not going to screw into there because it's just not designed for that. So. Uh, what I did is I ordered this female to female SMA adapter. This came from Amazon also. I could have gotten it a little cheaper if I wanted to wait for the shipping, but I ordered it through uh, Amazon and I got the prime shipping on it. It was here in just a couple days. Uh, I think it was $5.95. Uh, so once I got this, I put it onto my antenna here and I'll go ahead and show you what the problem is you get it screwed in here and then into the radio but the problem is even once you get it nice and tight on there you still have a pretty big gap there uh, which is just part of the connector and you know it's pretty sturdy I don't think it would cause any problems if I kept it that way but I'm the kind of guy that likes to uh, you know try to modify things and do some homebrew if you know what I mean uh, so went down to the hardware store and I got myself some neoprene washers these were um, uh, I think these biggest ones were maybe 15 cents each these small ones were 8 cents each I got them at the local uh, Ace Hardware um, all together I got way more washers than I needed and I also got a pack of half inch uh, heat shrink tubing so what I did 
I found these size neoprene washers. I don't remember the exact size, but if you head down to the hardware store, they'll have a section of just neoprene washers. And if you take your antenna in with you, you'll, you'll be able to find one that fits. And what I did here is it's a really tight fit, but I just squeezed it over and I got it onto the threads here. And it takes takes a little bit of effort, but once it once it catches the threads on there, it'll go right on. So we're just screwing that on there. Alrighty. So there we go. You can see uh I mean it's not a it's not a perfect match, but it's near perfect, which is which is good enough for me. So you got that small one on there. Then I also got some of this size. This size fits right over the SMA. You don't have to do a whole lot of forcing it. It just uh threads right on there. So now you got a Got that set up there, two of those neoprene washers. You still have plenty of SMA hanging out here to screw into the radio. And you could leave it at that if you wanted to, um, but I chose to take it even one step further. I found a neoprene washer this size, and it fits perfectly on the reverse SMA on this UV5R Plus. Now, it's loose on there, um, so I haven't really decided what I'm going to do yet, but I'm going to kind of learn as I go here while we're making this video. But you can see you can really get that thing cinched down on there, and uh, that gap is totally gone. You know, I, I would even uh, think that it may add a little bit of moisture resistance to that connection because that's really screwed down on there and those neoprene washers like to seal pretty good. So what I'm going to do next is take this back apart and you can see this big washer wants to kind of stick on there on its own even without any kind of adhesive, but I'll get to that later. So I've got some half inch heat shrink tubing here and I'm just gonna kinda rough rough mark it out so I know how much to put on there um, might as well just go ahead and cover up all the labeling just to keep it looking uniform so we'll cut it uh, I don't know that's about an inch and a quarter inch and a half somewhere around there If you've never worked with heat shrink tubing before, it's uh, it's pretty cool. Definitely easy to use, not not intimidating at all. So that looks like a really good fit. I'm gonna go ahead and slide it on there. Now that first washer, the bigger one of the two, it's a little tight, but it wants to slide on once you get it going. And uh, you know, with heat shrink tubing, I think tighter the tighter it is when it's and it's a uh, unshrunken state the better off you're gonna be once you get it shrunk so I'm gonna get it lined up real nice and flush with the edge of that larger washer and let's go ahead and shrink it down see what happens here Okay, that really pulled down nice on there. I'm happy with that for sure. Now, it looks like it's grabbed this uh, this larger washer, but uh, heat shrink tubing is not an adhesive, so uh, 
you know, down the road I may find that that washer wants to squeeze itself out of there. But um, for now I'm just going to leave it as is. Uh, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this larger of the two washers and I'm going to set it here on the radio. First I'm going to kind of clean it off a little bit here, make sure there's not that powder residue that kind of collects on it. I'm going to set it on the radio here just so it kind of acts like a template. And then I'm going to take my uh, my super glue here. This is a, uh, a uh, foam safe one that I use on my uh, radio controlled airplanes. They're styrofoam and you don't have to use this kind. I'm sure you could probably just use uh, your normal your normal super glue. So I'm going to take this and I'm just going to put a tiny little dab in a couple places here. Now I don't want to use too much because I really don't want to get any glue on the uh, the radio itself and you know when this squeezes down in all likelihood it's going to ooze a little bit but um, hopefully we can avoid getting it on the threads of the the receiving end there on the radio so let's go ahead and screw this on Okay, that's a real nice tight tight fit there. Get it nice and tight because you'll probably want to, when you're drying the glue on there, you're probably going to want to get it as tight as you're normally going to uh, screw it on there just so the next time you do it, it won't uh, break the, the uh, super glue. So uh, let's go ahead and turn the radio on here. Now this is the newest version, so uh, the voice on there doesn't have the Chinese accent. It's actually pretty clear. Uh, you know, for the price, I am just really impressed with this radio. It's not a $300 uh, handheld, but it's pretty darn close. So uh, let's see if we're picking anything up here. I've got my mobile. Uh, I'm tuned into one of the repeaters, and there's some guys that have been talking here. So let me go ahead and turn that off. And we'll switch the one zero bell phone nine, over here eight, and see if we can hear seven, him. Six. But you gotta keep in mind here, I'm down in my basement. So this radio definitely is not a base station at all. Uh, I definitely don't recommend it for use indoors. But if you wanted to try and connect a base antenna to it of some sort, I'm sure that would work. Uh, I haven't used it in the car yet, but I do have a mag mount uh, with a, an NMO receiver on it. And um, I think I'm going to eventually try it in the car. But I'm hoping to get out and do some hiking and try and do some mountain topping and you know see how far I can get out with this little radio. So anyways, that's... Uh, that's my setup. I hope you guys like it. If you have any comments or questions, go ahead and leave them for me, and I'll be happy to get back to you. Uh, I am a new ham, and I... Uh, there we go. Picking it up a little bit. Um, so, you can see it's working. This is the rubber duck antenna that the radio came with. Uh, I haven't even put that on the radio. I don't have any interest in using it. Uh, everything I've heard basically says it's a piece of crap so uh, you may be able to get away with using it and it, it would probably work for me in my situation because I'm in a in the city uh, I'm in Portland Oregon and the repeaters are pretty strong around here and uh, they're not too hard to hit so I'd probably be able to get it fine with this rubber ducky but I just like this diamond it's a good antenna high gain um, so yeah definitely worth looking into and That'll do it for now. This is Kilo Golf 7, Echo, Echo Delta, and I'm clear.